Football Fever. Here are your hosts, Patrick Wright and Luke Lidden. Well, folks, here we are again. Another week of high school football is in the books. Welcome to Friday Football Fever. We had crews all over the triad tonight to bring you some of the area's best action right on the gridiron. All right, let's start in Alamance County for our Wendy's game of the week as Western Alamance looked for its 15th straight win against Burlington Williams. And Williams hoped to get some luck from Harry's Rock before the game. And here come the Bulldogs ready for this big time rivalry. We'll start with Williams. They came out strong. How about Isaiah Coleman on the QB keeper breaks the tackle somehow stays on his feet cuts up the sideline and he's going to be dragged to the ground before he scores at the 23 yard run there that would lead to a field goal. It's 3 0 Burlington Williams later on some Williams D Alvante Richmond with the sack on fourth down. Of course, the students are all fired up, but after an interception, Western Alamance starts to take over. Daniels hits Jake Chrisman. Chrisman hits Perry Greason. They're getting fancy there. That's a 33 yard score. It's 7 3 Western Alamance. And with the half winding down, how about Daniels? Fakes the pass, holds on to it, somehow stays on his feet. Some guy over there just going flying through the air. I don't even understand what just happened. But that is a 33 yard run there. And then Daniels caps off the drive with the two yard touchdown. Western Alamance wins it 35 to 3. And I made the trip over to Forsyth County for a big pair of big time games. First up, a battle of unbeatens as East Forsyth took on Mount Tabor. We pick it up mid second quarter. East Forsyth up 10 nothing, but not for long as Kendrick Patterson swings it over to Zyquez McMillan. And the kids just too fast down the sideline, bouncing right into the end zone to cut the gap to three. So now time for a quick water break. And right back to the field, another scoring chance for the Spartans. Patterson, the quick strike to Thomas Braham, who crosses the goal line for the lead. But this was called back due to holding. The Spartans would not convert in the red zone. They'd go into the half down three, but they still go on to win by four, 21 to 17. All right, well, we've come to the first media timeout of tonight's Friday football fever. Still ahead, Northern Guilford made the trip over to Page for a Guilford County showdown, and Reedsville kicked off against McMichael. We'll have highlights from these and more coming up next. And don't forget, you can get updates and other triad games and scores as they are happening right from your phone and computer. Share photos and updates with us by liking us on Facebook. Just search Triad High School Sports and over on Twitter, we're at hashtag WFMYFFF. Join us on social media and we promise to join you on the other side of the break. We'll see you in two and a half minutes. All right, welcome back to the fever. It's time for our aviation triad flight of the night and this week it goes to Southwest Guilford. How about Devin Flowers airing it out to Dawson Whiteman? Then Flowers rolls out and throws it up for Tyree Graham who brings it in for the touchdown. That's our aviation triad flight of the night for week two of the regular season. Now Dudley opened the 2017 season with a shutout win at Carver and tonight the defending state champs were back on the road for a second straight week, this time at Ragsdale and here come the Tigers hoping to get the upset tonight, but we're going to start off with Dudley. How about Zarek Rush here getting off to a fast start. He takes the handoff. And you're not going to stop this guy gets around the edge. Yeah, we're speeding it up because he goes 82 yards for the first touchdown of the game. It's 7-0 Dudley, but Ragsdale's going to respond. Trey Jackson tosses one up to Trey Pratt. They connect on the 25 yard pass, and that's going to set up Malachi Manus. Manus tanking the handoff here, fighting his way into the end zone. That ties the game up at seven apiece, but Dudley was just too much in this one. Gerald Simpson, here he is on the QB keeper, spins into the end zone. Dudley wouldn't look back. They go on to win this one big, 74-21. Page opened the year with a win at Davie County. Now the Pirates back in Marion Kirby Stadium tonight for their first home game under head coach Jared Rafa. So how would his boys perform on the road early on? Didn't look too promising as Northern Guilford's Jacob Leonard connects with JJ Julian for six as he holds on. But Page responds. Sincere Davis just oh so genuine as he crosses the goal line for the score. Then the Pirates attack again. Gervonta, excuse me, Gervonta Page rolling right finds a wide open Naeem Brad Shear for the touch. Down, but we all know the game isn't over till the fat lady sings. Michael Froge picks off the pass and a great return at that to set his team up in pirate territory. So later in the drive, Leonard, another touchdown pass to Ford Moser, but Page too much at the end of the night as they are back in the end zone this time doing it with his legs. They win 38 27. 
All right, let's head up Highway 220 to Mayadan for a Rockingham County showdown between Reedsville and McMichael. And here come the McMichael Phoenix taking the field, hoping for a big night. We'll start off with McMichael on offense. Cliff Lester tosses it over to Dominique Hairston, and he's drilled by Reedsville's defense. Now, Reedsville will pile on from there. Later on, Titus Jones tosses one up, and that's a touchdown there. It's 6-0 Reedsville. And Jones is going to do it again, finding the same receiver, Isaac Hill, here for yet another touchdown. It's 14-0 Reedsville, and the fans are pumped. How about this, though? Mr. Easley fighting into the end zone for yet another score. Reedsville goes on to win this one, 58-7. to our Fever Caravan made the trip up to Mount Airy tonight. It was another battle of the unbeatens as the Granite Bears played host to West Stokes. And kids, take notes. This is how you dress for a football game. We pick it up in the first quarter. West Stokes, Chris Brown fielding the punt. Doesn't really find a lot of room, so he's going to reverse field going back the other way. And this is not how fast he ran, but it sure looks like he goes 68 yards to the Mount Airy 17 yard line, which would set up Brown on a four yard touchdown run. It's a very ugly looking tackle, but fortunately he was OK. West Stokes goes up seven zips. So now Mount Airy's ball. Ian Holder the screen to Cole Shelton breaks a tackle for 12 yards. All about moving the chains here, keeping that momentum going. So three plays later, Holder keeping himself for the 22 yard touchdown run to tie it up at seven apiece. So now to the second quarter after an interception, Jonathan Smith on the sweep, going to tight rope the sideline, staying in bounds for the nine yard touchdown. They take the lead there and Mount Airy wins by 18, 38 to 20. All right, the Seth Baxter era at Southwestern Randolph got off to a solid start in week one. The Cougars picked up a big win over Eastern Randolph, and tonight Southwestern met up with Randleman. Let's start things off in the first quarter. It's fourth down for Southwestern. They're putting it off to Umar Abdul Mateen. He's going to field the punt and watch the kid work getting out to the sideline, and he's going to get stopped just short of the goal line, but no problem here on the very next play for Randleman. How about Tanner McGee? Going to read the field, rolls out, and he's going to find Dawson Edwards for the touchdown. It's 27-0 Tigers. Then Southwestern trying to make a game of it. Braxton Davis with the grab from Brandon Jones. It's 27 to 7. Randleman though going on to win this one big 64 to 22. Got a lot of score, high scoring play games tonight, and we make our second stop of the night in Forsyth County as Carver took on West Forsyth, and it was another high scoring game. And this ball game was about as one sided as it could get. First quarter, Titans on the one yard line, and Mac Duke strolls into the end zone. And can't you just feel his excitement through the screen? No? Well, it's still good for six in the lead. So, next possession for Carver, not a good one as Morgan Young, watch closely pops up out of nowhere and picks off Mike Thomas Montgomery all the way back to the house for the pick six. And believe it or not, the very next series, the Titans had another pick six and they win in a big way. 68 to six, your final score. All right, still ahead, more scores and highlights from tonight's week two action. Friday football fever continues after the break. Stick around. Welcome back with the NFL getting into full swing. We'll take a look at Tory Holt tonight's Friday football fever flashback. A standout wide receiver at Eastern Guilford and NC State. Holt would go on to play 11 seasons in the NFL. All right, welcome back to week two of Friday football fever. Let's get right back to the action. Northwest Guilford hosted Western Guilford tonight, and we're going to start off with Northwest Guilford leading 27 0 at the half, and they picked up right where they left off in half number two. Jacob Leonard, here he is with the QB keeper, making it look easy, makes it 34 0. Vikings Western responds, though. Another Another QB keeper, Edric Purnell, going to hold on to this one, gets around the edge and races into the end zone to make it 34 to 7. Then more from Northwest, Trey Turner, he's headed to Virginia Tech, makes the grab and watch him just shedding defenders, going to sprint into the end zone and Northwest goes on to win this one 53 to 26. Back to Randolph County we go as Ashboro took the field against Grimsley. We start this in the third quarter. Grimsley in possession, a handoff to Cam Wall to the right side, finds a little bit of room until he's pushed up, pushed out of bounds, and then it was Ashboro's turn 
on offense. James Collin going to the right side himself, get, gets taken down around the 10 yard line and later the pass finds Deshaun Vaneaton for the Ashboro touchdown, but Grimsley still in control by seven points in the fourth quarter. Grimsley trying to make something out of nothing until a deep pass is intercepted by Vaneaton again and Grimsley wins over Ashboro by a single field goal, 24 to 21. And let's take a look at some other scores from tonight's action on the gridiron. Glenn shuts out Walkertown 52 to nothing. Eastern Alamance gets the 47 to 13 win at Burlington Cummings. Eastern Guilford rolls over Cedar Ridge 50 to seven and West Davidson beats South Davidson 24 zip. East Surrey top star mount 39 to 20. High Point Central gets the 21 to seven win over Southern Guilford while North Surrey rolls past Elkin 35 to 14 and Southeast Guilford wins a close one over Smith 11 to 6. Now Southern Alamance puts up big numbers beating Graham 62 to 30 and the opposite at East Davidson is Wheatmore tops the Golden Eagles 7 to 2. Now Rockingham County beats Eastern Randolph 50 to 27 while Reagan beats North Forsyth 22 to 7. Time now for our Blue Cross Blue Shield Drive of the Week, and it belongs to Paige. Early on, Javonde Page finds Nick Baker, and later Page going to connect with Niam Bradshear with the tough grab, moving the change, and Page later calls his own number, weaving through the defense, shedding off the tackles for the nice gain, moving into enemy territory, and then later, Sincere Davis, as we showed you earlier, caps off our Blue Cross Blue Shield Drive of the Week with that touchdown run. And with that, another exciting week of football is in the books. We've got five big games in the running for our Wendy's Game of the Week for next Friday. Page takes on Dudley. Mount Tabor travels to West for Scythe. Northwest Guilford meets up with Southeast Guilford. Randleman hosts Ledford. And East Surrey kicks off against North Surrey. You can head over to our website, WFMYNews2.com, to cast your vote right now. Voting ends Wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m. All right, folks, that does it for week two of Friday Football Fever. If you missed any of tonight's action, check out the scores and highlights online at WFMYNews2.com. All right, our next news starts with the Good Morning Show at 6 o'clock. Have a great night. Thank you for watching Friday Football Fever. We hope you enjoyed this WFMY News 2 broadcast.